let's add some text to this. I'm going to put the playhead over the second shot here in the timeline. And the easiest way to access your text tools is from your generators button. If you go to the video tab in the viewer, this little A button in the lower right corner of the viewer is the generators button. Click on that and go down to text and go to text. This is the basic text tool. These are legacy tools going back to the earliest versions of Final Cut. I'll show you this first and I'll also show you the Boris text tool, Boris Title 3D, which is used for most text. Let me just activate the text tool. It comes up here with sample text. We want to edit this into the timeline. The simplest way to do that is to use a superimpose function. You can grab this and drag it to superimpose down here at the bottom or use the keyboard shortcut F12. It'll drop it in over the shot that's underneath the playhead on the destination track. So this is the destination or target track. It puts it on the track above. Open up the text that's in the timeline. It's important that you do this. Do not edit the text that's in the viewer. You want to work on the one that's in the timeline. Double click on the one that's in the timeline. Go into the controls tab here and you can change the text. Click in the text box and type in some word like river and maybe change the color down here where it says font color. Click on the swatch and maybe I'll take a nice red here, not too bright. Click on it and that will change the color here in the canvas. That's why I like to edit in the text into the timeline. First you can see it over the video. Push up the point size, make it really big. You want to be careful about the title safe area. Here in the view pop-up you can turn on show title safe. You want to keep the text within that title safe area. This is plenty big enough. I want it to be a bit lower in the frame so that the text is more centered. Click on the origin button here. The origin crosshair button. Activate that. Go into the canvas. Hold down the mouse. As long as you hold on the mouse you can drag this around the screen. Right about there. I'm going to set the X value to zero. That'll center it on the screen. You also have controls here for tracking. And if you scroll down in here you have controls for letting and aspect and so on. But these are the basic controls. You can change the font here into one of the other, your other fonts. Maybe I'll change to Helvetica. All the text in this text tool has to be the same color and the same font and the same size. Let's look at a slightly more advanced text tool. I'll just delete this one. Select it, press the delete key, and it's gone. Go to the Generators button, go to Boris, and go to Title 3D. And in the Controls tab, you'll get this window here. This lets you do things like tumble and scale and rotate. If you scroll down here, you'll see there are a lot of other letter tumble, letter spin, and so on. These are all animatable properties. Wherever you see one of these little diamond buttons, that means you can animate a property, as we've done before. To actually get to the text tools, click on the button here where it says Title 3D. And it loads up this window. Let's type in something. I'm going to type in city and select it. This works like a word processor. If you don't select the text, it won't change it. So if you want to make a change, you have to select the text. Select it. You can pick a font here, any of the available fonts on your system. Maybe I'll pick Arial Black, which is very commonly used. Change the point size, make it 56 or so and change the alignment. Click on the center line button. In the second tab, there are five tabs over here, in the second tab you can turn on wrapping. It defaults to no wrap, which means that it'll just type right off the screen. If you turn on wrapping, it'll wrap around the typing. The third tab is where you can set the color. Click on the little color swatch here. I can pick a color again. You can also make it a gradient. If you turn on the text fill to gradient, you have a gradient editor and you can go inside here, turn on live updates, you can see what it's doing. Pick a color here, click on the swatch, make that blue, and maybe leave the other side white. If you want to add a stop, just click underneath here and you have an, another color here, maybe I'll make that one gold, and you get this kind of gradient effect and you can move these stops around and get different looks change the type of gradient, change the angle. You can have a lot of fun with that. But I might just return to uh, a basic color, switch back to color, and I'll leave it red for the moment. The uh, fourth tab down lets you add edges to this. Click on here, activate one of the five edges. You can have five separate edges. Turn on the edge, a little checkbox. 
you can put the edge on the center or you can put it on the inside or, or on the outside. I'll just put it on the outside here. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want. Maybe make it a little bit, make it beveled, a slightly beveled look to it. The fifth tab lets you add a drop shadow. Again, click on a little checkbox to activate the drop shadow. Push it away a bit. Change the type of shadow from drop to cast or a solid shadow, which gives you kind of a 3D extruded look. So I'll just go back to a regular drop shadow. Maybe I'll make it a little bit softer. And push up the opacity as well. And when you have it the way you like it, click on the Apply button and go back into the Video tab. And before you do anything else, edit it into the timeline. F12 will superimpose it into the timeline. Again, if you want to make a change here, maybe I want to make this a little bit bigger, open this into the Viewer, go to the Controls tab, this is a fully vector-based graphic. That means that you can scale it cleanly. If I unlock Lock to Scale X, I can scale the X and the Y values quite separately from each other, and you'll get a quite sharp and clean text. Just go inside there, and maybe I'll push up my tracking a little bit so the text isn't quite so overlapped. You can also do kerning. If you put your cursor between letter pairs, you can current individual letter pairs. So you have really excellent control, much more control than you have in the standard text tool. Click apply and there will be your text over the image. Very often text works very well with composite mode, so I'm just going to apply a composite mode to this. Click on, let's try multiply, and you'll see that the text interacts with the underlying image. And if you animate the text with the position XY button, just as the origin button, you can click in here and drag the text around the screen. You see how it changes depending upon what's underneath it. Just move it up a little bit higher in the screen. I'm going to make one more text block because I want to show you another type of composite mode. I'll go into the standard generators button here, call up Title 3D again. In the controls, type in trees. I'm going to reset this so it's just white instead of this fancy font. Just click on the reset style button. That will reset it to white. I'll make this a lot bigger and make this 96 point. Click apply and I'll superimpose this in the timeline. Drag it to superimpose and it puts it on top of the video. Once again, I'm going to make it much bigger in the controls tab here. Open it from the timeline, put up the scale value and do the Y independently. What I want to show you is a travel mat. I'm going to take this image and put it on top of the video. Now the video completely covers the text. But if I apply composite mode by right-clicking on this, composite mode, travel map alpha or luma, in this case alpha because the text has transparency, I will only see the trees where there is text. Everything else around this is transparent. If I wanted to, I could put some other image underneath here. Let's put a custom gradient underneath here. Click on the video button. Go into your generators. There are lots of different types of generators here. Color solids, render effects, shapes. I'm just going to go in here and let's say take my custom gradient and drop that underneath here. Just drag it into the timeline, shorten it. And now I have the image composited with the text on top of this gradient. And obviously I can change the gradient, make it whatever colors I want, and I can animate the colors if I wished. This will give you some ideas of the capabilities of composite modes and travel map.